The new head coach of the Rams is John Robinson, and one of his best friends, maybe his best friend, is our CBS analyst, John Madden, who is, of course, with me. John, what do you think your buddy has to accomplish? What do you think he wants to accomplish? Well, you know, I was talking to John last night and then again this morning, and he really doesn't know what to expect, but I'll guarantee you one thing. He will be excited today on opening day. And there's going to be a lot of changes in the Rams. You know, they have 18 new faces on that team this year. On defense, they've gone away from a four-man line, and they're in a three-man line now. Of course, they have Eric Dickerson, a great runner. And the one other thing they have is no quarterback controversy. Vince Ferragamo is the quarterback. Bill Parcells, the new head coach of the Giants, was their defensive coordinator. Now he's the head coach. You spent a lot of time with him yesterday. What did he have to say? We well, you know the same thing. He really doesn't know about this team. You say, you know, you play those preseason games, you're playing a lot of players, you don't really know how good you are. I think he feels comfortable with the defense. Of course, he was a coordinator. But the offense, he had a, he had a quarterback contest. And, uh, of course, Scott Bruner won that. And he'll start today. But he said the big thing is a running game. He said he wants to be able to rush the football. Last year, the Giants were last in rushing in the NFL. And he said he wants to get that started today. So the Giants won the toss and, as you would expect, of course, have re elected to receive. They send Billy Camfield back deep. The kicker is Chuck Nelson, one of those new Rams, number 13. There is number 35, Billy Camfield. Of course, he came from the Eagles, a familiar name in these parts. Chuck Nelson with a good leg. Been a little bit erratic, quite honestly. And this giant crowd, you should have heard the welcome that they gave the players and the Giants were introduced. And now they start steady applause. I don't know how long that's going to last. Nelson aims it high and it will be Canfield at the bottom. Maybe the four. Billy Canfield is hit hard as the Rams do a good job on defense. A.J. Jones made the stop. The Giants back in receivers. Bruner, Wolfram, Carpenter, Ernest Gray, and John Missler. The offensive line, and that is something that is a bit of a question. Vincent Ard, Humphrey Turner, and Gordon King at the same line as last year. And Zeke Mowat is a new tight end. Rams have a man hurt. Not sure who he is yet. Number 66, I believe. Yes. Williams on defense. Blood, Meisner, and Reggie Doss. As John Madden mentioned, it is a three-man front now, and four linebackers, Owens, Youngblood, Jim, Eckern, and Andrews. In the secondary, Kirk Collins and Leroy Irvin, the cornerbacks, Johnny Johnson, and Nolan Cromwell have switched positions. Williams is still down. Bad to get hurt anytime, John, but when it happens on the first play of the new season, They had waived him uh, this week and the last cut when he cut down to 49, and then they just picked him up again the other day. Here it comes off with a little bit of an assistance. So it'll be first down for the Giants when they come out of the huddle at their own 22. Scott Bruner in his career, not one of those impressive percentage statistical quarterbacks, but he gets the ball up the field. That was one of the reasons, I think, that he's starting for the Giants today. Rob Carpenter and Butch Wolfolk. Missler in motion. And Gunner will put it up on first down, and so do the referee. Moa makes the reception. Penalty marker down. Zeke Mowat is an interesting story. He was a free agent, not drafted from Florida State. Not only came in and made this team, but he's a starter. The thing that Bill Parcells likes about him, Pat, is not his receiving, but his blocking. He said for the first time in years, the Giants finally have a tight end who can block. 6'3 and 238. And in the Florida State system, that was what he was used for. They had another tight end who came in on receiving down. Side, defense number 85. Jack Youngblood jumps off 
offsides too soon. New position for Jack, and we'll be watching him throughout the afternoon. First and five. contact and take him down. Carpenter had an off year last year. Of course, you remember he had that long holdout. Finally settled his contract difficulties and came back. The year before, he had a great year. Of course, when they drafted Butch Wolfolk, the other running back, number one, and they really haven't had an opportunity to work together until this training camp. So it's second and three. And in the giant scheme of things, those two running backs have to be willing have to achieve blocking for each other. And off to Wolf. To the 30. Shy of the first down as Youngblood tripped him up. Jack. You know, it's an interesting thing that Bill Parcells was saying is they wanted to be able to run Wolfo and Joe Morris, his backup, to the outside. He said they hadn't been able to get outside before, so everything was inside. He said now that he has a tight end, Zeke Mowat, they hope that they can get outside those corners. Now on third and two, the Giants move into an offensive set with three tight ends. Moat, Mullody, and Malcolm Scott. Mullody in motion. Brunner gets to Rob Carpenter, who gets to the outside and gets the Giants first down to about the 37. Johnny Johnson came up to make the stop. For that, for a big guy like Rob Carpenter, is he can sure make that bounce out. Most fullbacks take it inside and keep it inside, but watch him. He starts up to the inside and just outruns the entire defense and gets man on man on a corner and when that on a safety, excuse me, but in short yardage, you'll always get the first down in that situation. Bill Parcells over on the sideline wearing the headset. His first game, regular season wise, as a new head coach. On first down, Gunner will throw. Under pressure by Youngblood. Throws it away. Good pass rush by Jack Youngblood. Yeah, something happened out there, Pat. They had a screen developing out there with the lineman, but there was no back out there to catch the ball. It's kind of tough. Let's see if we can see it here. It's going to go out to the left and see what happens to the back because we'll see the line get out there. It's probably Butch Wolfolk. He goes to the right. Carpenter goes to the right. Carpenter was trying to sneak out there. I think they grabbed him. You see, he only has two guards. He just threw it out of bounds. Check with it. Tee it up next time. Second and ten. I think you're exactly right. Run it back now. Here comes Youngblood again. Right around Gordon King and Jack Youngblood, who thought about retiring. Doesn't look like he'll think about it too much longer. So, yeah, I saw Jack Youngblood practice yesterday. The Rams practiced out here, and they just had on shorts and T-shirts. And he looks in the best shape that I've seen in the last five years. He's always had this great move. Let's watch it again. He'll come from the left-hand side here, the right-hand side, excuse me, from the outside. He's going to come right around King, and here he comes, and Bruner doesn't have a chance. So third down, and 19, back at the Giant 28. No score. Possession of the game so far, Bruner, back again. Bruner down the middle. That man open. It was Danny Pittman. That one, I believe, should have been should have been a giant first down. Nolan Cromwell made the hit on Danny Pittman. The first score in the NFL today was by the Green Bay Packers. It came on a 22-yard pass from Lynn Dickey to Paul Kaufman. The Packers lead Houston 7-0. Fair catch. Rams will take over at the Giant 39, at their own 39, make that. A 33-yard punt, no return. Not Vintage Jennings. Nothing, nothing to still score between the Rams and the Giants at Giant Stadium. The Los Angeles Ram offense. Quarterback, Ferragamo. The two runners, Dickerson and Gouman. Wide receivers, George Farmer and Preston Dinar. Up front, Maine Hill, Smith, Bollinger, Jackie Slater, and Mike Barber, the tight end. The Giant defense in just a minute. Eric Dickerson and Mike Gouman line up in the I formation. Barber moves. Gouman moves. 
Dickerson, the lone runner. And Eric Dickerson straight ahead for eight. On defense, the Giants go with a three-man front. McGriff, Neal, D. Hardison. The linebackers, what a great group. Van Pelt, Kelly, McLaughlin, place of Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. Secondary, Dennis Jackson, Reese and Courier. Veteran group, second and three, seven yards for Dickerson on his first throw carry. Armour in motion, Dickerson again, and he gets a ran. Well, he's close to a ran first down. Dickerson, who had such a great college career, had a good preseason. They'll measure this one, see if it's the sticks. I don't believe it is. You saw him in the lobby of the hotel yesterday, and in street clothes, he even looks like an all-star. He really does. He's was... a lot taller than I thought. He's six foot three. Yeah. I was at a couple of banquets with him during the off-season. As Dick Bass, the great Ram runner, was talking to us before, saying he he looks like a star, as you said. He carries himself like one. He carries the ball like one. I'll tell you, he got a lot of money. He was the second player taken in the NFL draft, but he'll earn it this year. Yeah, they, they planned a busy year for him. Big things. We'll have to figure out at the end of the year how much he gets per carry. Dickerson right, Dickerson left, Dickerson up the middle. The Minnesota Vikings lead Cleveland 7 0. One yard run by Ted Brown. Those Vikings might surprise a lot of people. Gamo does it himself and does get the Ram first down right at midfield. Eric Williams, who was injured on the opening kickoff, has a bruise on his leg. He'll be out at least the rest of the first half. I see him sitting on the on the table on the Ram bench now. He doesn't seem to be in, the, in any terrific discomfort. There he is. Williams was a linebacker at USC when John Robinson was there. Little the St. Louis Cardinal. From midfield, Terracamo with his first pass. Outside, his receiver, Mike Barber, slipped down. There was a wet spot right where Barber was trying to run that pattern. Brad Van Pelt was out there with him. St. Louis, seven. New Orleans, nothing. 11-yard pass from Lomax to Marsh. Next Sunday, don't forget, the NFL Today, of course, begins it. The Giants will be in Atlanta, Washington against Philadelphia, and Dallas against St. Louis. It all begins at 12.30 Eastern time. Second and 10 now. Ferragamo looking over the defense. Gooman flanks to the right. Dickerson goes deep. Draw play, Eric Dickerson. Good juke in the middle of that run. Well, you know, Bill Parcells was saying yesterday he said he's a skipper. He said, you know, he's one of those guys that can skip, and I know what he means. I think we see it right here. Look, it's a delay play or draw. You see that little skip in there? Another skip in there. There's only about two or three guys that have ever played this game that have those skips. I may be wrong, John, but I think that's something that you can't teach. You don't teach that one. They're boring with that one. Down and three from the Giant 43. Dickerson again, the lone setback. Dickerson is working. He is very close one more time to a ran first down. Brian Kelly made the stop. Right now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. John, Lynn Dickey did start. He had muscle spasms earlier in the week. He goes to his fine tight end, Paul Kaufman. It is now 7-3. Houston has just kicked a field goal. Let's go back to Pat and John. All right, Brent, no score at Giant Stadium, but the Rams are on the move, measuring for a first down as we come back. interesting call in the NFL. Had that not been a first down, you get fourth down on the 40, what do you do? No one, John, he would have been so excited. Excited, you know, opening day, the season starting. We're here, we're playing. He would go for it. Dinard comes out wide to the left, Farmer to the right. Eric Dickerson getting a workout so far. Warm after
afternoon at Giant Stadium. Gooman is the man in motion. Dickerson stays in, not checked out. Here's Gooman. Another ramp first down. Hit down by Terry Jackson first. With an assist from McLaughlin. There's John Robinson. Look, he's calm now, but I know what's under that shirt. And that's not calm. That's, that's a lot of stuff juggling under there. You know, I think they see that guy go in motion so much, that Gooman, and he blocks, and he goes here, that he goes out for a pass, and no one pays any attention to him. Bill Parcells over on the other side of the field, a 12-yard pickup on that pass completion from Ferragamo to Gooman. From the Giant 28, Farmer comes in motion. Cuts up field, and Ferragamo drops. Has the man open. David Hill. talking before the game and saying that the Rams have 18 roster changes on this team, 18 new players. They made a lot of trades. John Robinson was saying that he thinks the biggest trade they made was for David Hill. I talked to David Hill before the game and I asked him how he liked Los Angeles. He said, I like it so much, I'm even enjoying the smog. <laughs> you what you can really tell if they enjoy it, if they tell you that they enjoy practicing this small right. It is hard to breathe. Second down, two from the 20. Hill swinging back. This is Eric Dickinson looking inside, looking for his hole. Got another first down before he stopped by Lawrence Taylor. Let's have a look, John, at some of those. Look at all those guys. Russ Bollinger is starting today in the place of Dennis Hara. He was, of course, traded to Detroit. David Hill, Steve Fuller, who's a backup quarterback from Kansas City. Eric Harris, he'll be a cornerback for him. Gary Jeter, the old giant, he's a backup defensive end. We'll probably see him. Look at that list. just goes on and on and on. Those are just the veterans. 18 new faces. Third and one. And it's a very short one. A.J. Jones. But this is Dickerson. He may not have it. He only needed about a foot. And it's going to be close. So John Robinson may indeed have a chance to make that call. A lot of interesting things here. The old right foot, left foot deal. Where they spot the ball. And we'll get if it's not. It's not. It's fourth down. Well, he's already made that decision. He's going to go for the field goal. And a rookie kicker. Let's watch the middle of that line there. The nose tackle, Bill Neal, does a nice job on Duck Smith. You see that? To run in the middle, that center, Duck Smith has to get movement on that nose tackle. Bill Neal took Smith and put him in the backfield. You can't gain it. You don't get some movement. Chuck Nelson will try from 32 yards out. And it's good. Nelson, the rookie from Washington, the most accurate field goal kicker. When he was in college in the history of the NCAA, and the Rams break on top 3 0. Chuck Nelson's first professional field goal. What a relief. Kickers make very good officials. They sure do, even as that hand slapped down. We were watching practice yesterday, and I don't think I've ever seen a more nervous kicker the day before the game than Chuck Nelson yesterday. He's about to kick off, and he won't be quite so nervous now after that first one got through. Billy Campfield back deep for the Giants. From the three this time. Rams down quickly. Penalty marker down. Raiders lead Cincinnati 7 to nothing. One yard run by Marcus Allen. Against the Giants. Baltimore over New England, 3 0, first quarter. Raul Allegre, the field goal. Offensive holding, number 62 on the kick return team. Andy Hedden, 62, on the left there, who was holding. He's another impressive rookie for that giant team. Another tall, good linebacker. First and ten from the ten for the Giants. And Brunner, the inside handoff to Brooke Wolfe. Nothing doing as Carl 
Hecker for that play down from the very beginning. A few boos already. I'll tell you, these Giant fans always have such great expectations for this Giant team. You know, they, the Super Bowl, here we come and all that. Man, they'll stay in the in the introductions today. They were going crazy, this, this place, and now <laughs> they haven't done anything yet. It's always sold out, and they keep coming back, and they have for so many years. Of course, this is a great stadium. Runner to Carpenter. Carpenter has some yards before he's tripped up at about the 13 by strong safety this year, Nolan Cromwell. Why do you think Robinson made that switch between Cromwell? Well, you know, with all the motion and the tight ends and everyone moving, it's tough this year to have a strong safety and a weak safety. So the Rams started out leaving Nolan Cromwell on the left and Johnny Johnson on the right. And if the tight end came to their side, they were strong. If the tight end went away, they were weak. And they found out that Cromwell was doing much better when he was on the strong side, so they made him a strong safety. Back goes Bruner again. Tough play. Danny Pittman managed to hang on to this one. That must be a pattern that they like and think we'll succeed. 19 yards, first down. Watch Danny Pittman here. He'll, he'll come off the line. He's going to run it in. You see it's a zone. See the corners off, safety's off, everyone's loose. They just let him run that pattern right in front of him. And as long as those corners, Leroy Irvin and Kirk Collins, play that deep and give that much room, that pattern will be there all day. Winner will throw again if he has time. He doesn't. Hit from behind by the blitzing linebacker George Andrews and really pop. Out there and he beats the, the left guard. Watch 67, Billy Yard. He comes out there, he's in good position, but he didn't have his legs up under him. Andrews came out, took on the guard, threw him off, and hit Bruner just as he threw the ball. That's tough. You know, when you put a guard on that linebacker, dog on, you have to get him blocked. He did a reverse pivot coming out of the line for some reason. An old trick where you go like you're dropping back and then you come forward. Here goes Bruner again. Screen pass set up, batted away. Slipped out of his hand. Right, nobody batted it away and he picked it up. Carl Hector dropped him to the turf. And now the officials say he was in the act of throwing, I believe. Yeah. I think they're leaving the ball there, but you know, sometimes the quarterback's hands get slippery. And it looks like this happens to Bruner because he just sets up here. Now, watch, he brings the ball back, and as he brings it back to throw it forward, it just falls out, and then he picks it up and gains a few yards with it. Nice little move. Looks like Dickerson. Yeah. Scoreboard says second and seven, the sideline says third and seven. Bruner. It academic. Danny Pittman makes it first down. Giants at midfield. Kurt Collins on the stop. For an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Pat, here's how the St. Louis Cardinals scored. Neil Lomax, who's just getting better and better, he avoids the New Orleans pressure. And Doug Marsh is open and 11 yard score, and it is 7 0. Let's go back to Pat and John. Here at the Meadowlands, Giants. Three, the Giants, nothing. St. Louis, another team that might surprise a lot of people. A lot of people. Mulody and Moat in the game. They run Carpenter to the left. He cuts back to the right. He got about three. Johnny Johnson came up to make the initial contact. One of the things that John Robinson is concerned about is his defense, and, and he's concerned with the other team banging away at him, just running straight at him, because he really doesn't have the type of defensive lineman to play a three-man line. I mean, Jack Youngblood, Reggie Doss, those are defensive end types in a four-man line. Second and seven, and Brunner under pressure, ball batted away. Hit by Greg Meisner, the nose tackle. Was the intended receiver. A couple of other scores. Atlanta six, the Chicago Bears nothing. They missed the extra point. Bill Andrews scored. William Andrews, he prefers. Pass from Bartkowski. Third down and eight from the Ram 47. 
gain of receivers come to the right. Now part of the gain goes left. Now they're three to the right. Missler goes in motion. Now he comes back. Rams, I believe Youngblood jumped offside. That's Missler who made the catch. Close to first down yardage. Jack, Youngblood is anxious today. I think he's looking forward to a big year. He was a little too anxious on that play. He jumped offside. Now the Rams do go back to a four-man line on passing down. So that means that Jack Youngblood then can get a little wider on that tackle. See that three-man line? That brings those ends in where they darn near have to line up head up on those tackles. But the four-man line, when they have tackles inside of them, then they can line up wider on the tackles and get up the field. Which Youngblood much prefers. He's made because a living for years of that. Been doing it for 12 years. Bob Frederick. Defense, offside, number 85, third down. That'll make it third and two from the 42. It'll be the Giant 42, the Rams leading three to nothing. Chuck Nelson, field goal, from 36 yards out. is one of those guys that always seems to get open. He's Scott Bruner's favorite receiver. You watch Bruner there. He watches Missler all the way. Just gets enough to pick up the first down. Like Missler was in a contest with uh, Johnny Perkins for the starting position, and he beat out Perkins this year. Moat is the tight end on this side, and Mullody now comes over and joins him. Ernest Gray is wide. There goes Mullody in motion. Carpenter cut up behind his block very quickly. Carl Eckern broke it down. One thing I'm surprised the Giants haven't tried to do is they were talking yesterday how good Zeke Mowat is at blocking that outside man, that linebacker, and they wanted to sweep more, get outside, and I'm surprised that they haven't tried to with Butch Wolfork or Joe Morris. Houston 10 now, Green Bay 7, Manning to Tim Smith puts the Oilers ahead. Rams showing blitz on second down, and the Giants pick it up pretty well momentarily before George Andrews gets around the outside and Brunner goes down. That was one I think they picked it up pretty well, but the Rams just brought too many linebackers on them. They're a three-man line, and watch this. The two inside guys will come. We see them right here. They'll come to the same side. See to this right side? Plus the two outside guys. They, they picked up the inside guys. Now watch right from behind. Look out! Boom! That's the worst thing, that backside. You can't see that. And all you can do is yell, look out. The end of the first quarter, then, with the Los Angeles Rams leading the Giants 3 to nothing at Giants Stadium. Coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is taking charge. Light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by the U.S. Army. A place to be all you can be. as we start the second quarter with the Rams leading 3 0 Billy Campfield's in the Giants' backfield. Bruner got the throw. Intended for Danny Pittman incomplete. Right now for an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Here's one for John's chalkboard. Archie Manning in a shotgun with a running back right next to him, and he's going to throw to Tim Smith, who's caught only four career passes, and Smith runs it in for Houston, and now they have taken the lead on the pack, 10-7. Let's go back to Pat and John. Back in punt formation, Dave Jennings is one punt. Today, 33 yards, no return. This one aiming for the corner. Their catch signaled for by Henry Ellert. Inside the 10. As high as it was, I think he had 
the handle. Sometimes they think that's a mistake if you catch it inside the 10, but that time the Giants were down in good shape. Rams lead 3 nothing. U.S. Open Tennis Championships will come up right after this game is over. The number one seed, John McEnroe, against Vince Van Patten. I watched McEnroe play against John Sadri the other day, and I've never seen him look sharper. Of course, he loves that surface. Loves to play there, but he has lost to Vince Van Patten. First down, Rams, Bergamo on first down. Had a man wide open. Preston Dinard. And the giant defender, Terry Jackson, just deflected it at the last second. I thought Jackson thought that he had that ball, but he also thought had he had that ball, he would have had a touchdown. Watch this, it's a zone. And Jackson will let him go and then come back underneath. Now watch that. There's Jackson. Oh, he just got his left hand up. You have to get both those hands up. So he got both the hands on his head, but he didn't but get both the, the hands ball. on his ball. Second and ten. Gilman the flanker to the right, Eric Dickerson the lone setback. Pitch out, Dickerson. Dickerson cutting back to about the eight or nine. Lawrence Taylor. Him up. I think that's the first play that we've seen Lawrence Taylor make today, and here we are in the second quarter. That's unusual. The Rams are doing a good job on him. Now, he'll go right side or left side. He's on the left defensive side this time, takes on a blocker, comes in and makes a diving tackle. Curtis McGriff comes out, and the pass rusher. George Martin comes in. Miami Buffalo scoreless second quarter. Detroit got a safety when Jerry Goldstein was tackled in the end zone. Detroit leads them to nothing. Dickerson almost broke out of the pack. Couldn't shake it. And the Rams will have to punt. Much to the delight of this sellout crowd. Giant defense is equal to the occasion. 78,000 plus on him. You know, there's a guy in that giant defense that does a heck of a job, and that's Bill Neal, the nose tackle. I always talk about the linebacker. But I'm you, he really plucks up that middle. They missed him sorely last year. Misko back in the end zone to punt for the Rams, and he was really bombing them in pregame one. Beasley Reese back deep for the Giants. And he is bombing this one, too. Somebody ought to be close by when Beasley makes the catch. Somebody was. 45-yard punt. Duck Barnett for the Ram who was down quickly. And give an assist to the kicker for this one. Boy, he hung it up there. Beasley Reese caught that ball a little too close to his body. It darn near went right off his right shoulder pad. But the Giants will take over. Opening second to quarter number two. We're at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Nearby Manhattan. Matt Summerall with John Madden, 3-0 Rams. Miami, 3-0 over Buffalo. Uva von Schumann, 32 out. Detroit, 5-0. 29 yards by Ed Murray. Wolf put out wide to the right. Carpenter is the runner. Run down from behind by Andrews with an assist from Reggie Doss. This is what the Giants have to do better. You know, in this game on first down, they're only averaging .5. Now, look what the Rams are doing on first down. They're 5.4, and that's a big, big difference. You know, when you have to play second and long and third and long, it's a tough thing in this league today with all the situation substitutions. Second and seven. Giants from their own 48. Rams lead 3 nothing. Bringer back to throw. Ernest Gray keeps his hand on the ground and helps him keep his balance. He goes out of bounds at the Rams 41. Nolan Cromwell knocked him out of bounds. I think that was one of the things where the where the Ram defense is playing zone and they drop deeper, seeing Gray is able to come underneath, and there's no linebacker out there until Nolan Cromwell, the safety, finally gets there. The linebackers all drop deeper than Ernest Gray did. Ernest Gray is wide to the left this time. Carpenter, the lone runner, or lone setback, is Wolf, Wolf Hook is flanked to the right. And off Carpenter. Might go. Rob 
Carpenter stays on his feet as finally knocked out of bounds at the four by Johnny Johnson. 37 yards. The Giants didn't have a run that long all of last year. They didn't have one in preseason either. Their longest was 16 yards. Now watch this quickness here by Carpenter. He starts up the middle, finds a hole there, then darts to the outside, gets around the final corner, and then right up the sideline. I'll tell you, for a big guy, he sure has a lot of quickness and balance. Look at that balance. First and goal, Giants. They go with three tight ends. They give to Carpenter. Carpenter will score.
fallen out and up. Now Farmer, you see Ferragamo here, Farmer's going to run and out in front of Dennis. You see, and then he watches, and then Farmer turns up the field. Dennis stays underneath and makes the interception. So the Giants will take over at the Ram 48. Ten minutes to go in the first half for the Ram with the Giants leading 6-3. talk about a double zone. Now, what is a double zone? Here's Mike Dennis, the corner. He's going to come up and bump George Farmer right here. The safety's coming over deep. He has him deep. He has him short. Now, after the bump, he'll stay right underneath. Farmer comes here and up. He stays underneath and makes the interception. Now, watch this. It's a double zone. We'll see Dennis come up. You see, he sneaks up. He gets his bump right there. Forces Farmer, Farmer to the outside. Stays underneath him. The safety has him deep. And then he's able to make that interception. That's a double zone. Ironic, you were just talking before, John, about the loss of Mark Haynes and then his replacement, Dennis, comes up with the interception. Flea Flicker and Brenner going deep. And Dennis for Wolf. And the Rams were never fooled for one second. and you're running on a streak or an up, you just have to get up and go. And he was stopping and starting and hesitating. And, of course, he is a running back who they put out as a receiver. Green Bay 14 now, Houston 10. Five-yard pass from Wim Dickey to John Jefferson. Those Packers can put some points on the board. Second and 10. Missler in motion. Pitch back to Wolfram. Trying to get to the outside, as they had hoped to do, and Wolf ducks his head for about four. I'll tell you, that Moyot got his block. There's a penalty on the play. It looks like it's going to be holding against the Giants. But the tight end did his job. That's the rookie from Florida State, Zeke Moat. Some game they had, Florida State, last night. You see that score? That uh, was a lot of points. I couldn't believe it. And one of those computer things to add it all up. 47-46, Florida State beat East Carolina. That coach does a great job down there, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Offensive holding, number 72. Gordon King, the culprit. Let's watch Zeke Mowat here. He's the tight end right, right there, and you see him blocking the linebacker. You see he gets on him, gets his head in there, keeps his feet going, drive, 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 stay with him, stay with him, get him to the outside. Gordon King was holding Youngblood, and there was really no doubt about it. Second and 20. Missed for in motion. Drop play Carpenter. Carpenter ran for about 10 or 11. And I mean, he put the hammer on somebody. Nolan Cromwell, I think. That's what you call finishing a runoff. Now, watch the tight end here at the right hand at the end of the screen. Again, he starts on the linebacker. Now, look, he starts and turns his body to the side so that he can't get in. And zoom, there goes Rob Carpenter right by him. Carpenter, Rob Carpenter, blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy named Rob. You don't believe he's 6'1", 230 pounds, but a good back finishes off a run. He almost finished off Cromwell. Under pressure. That may be a fumble. It is a fumble. Rams will take over. And you see who caused it. That was big Gary Jeter, who the Giants traded to the Rams in the offseason. Jack Youngblood again put the heat on. Along with Gary Jeter. Don't you know that makes Jeter very happy? That makes her the Giants feel. No, it doesn't make him feel. This is a tough thing here. Now watch this. You see the motion man, him going back. Now watch, right up the middle, and he just didn't have a chance. He was trying to get rid of the ball. Never saw Jeter, I don't think. And Youngblood came up with the recovery. So the Rams will take over at the Giant 43, 858 left in the first half. 6-3 Giants. Number one seeded John McEnroe will play Vince Van Patten following football of the U.S. Open Tennis Championships of 1983, and they have been drawing record crowds this year. I was out yesterday, the day before, and the day before. And we'll be back again tomorrow, the rest of the week. The finals next Sunday. Gary Jeter over on the sideline. Hill with the man in motion. Eric Dicker 
Anderson was shot by Bill Curry, Lawrence Taylor. Now let's go for an update to Brent Musburger in New York. That is third down for the Chicago Bears, and here is Jim McMahon pulling out. Now he's looking for Kenny Marjoram out of Stanford. Marjoram doesn't have blazing speed, but he's got spectacular moves and leaping ability. He gets up high enough to hold on to it long enough. Let's go back now to Pat Summerall. 6-3, Giants, Rams. Eric Dickerson cuts inside and cuts ahead. Wow. To about the 22-yard line is Eric Dickerson, stopped by Mike Dennis. He picked up 24 yards. And he broke his shoulder pad. You see that? He's pointing it. But see, he's going to take him right there. You know, a string holds those folded shoulder pads, and sometimes when they get hit, that string just pops. But the big thing on this run, one back. Now watch this cut that he makes here. Cut there. But the big thing is, watch how he finishes off the run. Boom! He gets there, and he's still makes four or five yards after the initial contact. Robert Alexander has replaced him. David Hill in motion. Eric Amo to throw. Down the middle complete to Mike Barber, the tight end. Barber fights down to about the 16. Gain of about five. Brian Kelly made the stop. Mike Barber, of course, was a great tight end with the Houston Oilers. After they got Dave Casper, they were able to trade him to the Rams. The Rams have always been looking for a tight end, and now they really have have two in, in Mike Barber and David Hill. Two good veterans. Jimmy! Jimmy! Make it second and four. The line of scrimmage the 16-yard line. Dickerson is back. One back offense. Dickerson stays in this time. Ferragamo looking downfield. Has Mike Barber. Good catch. Down Rams. It'll be first and goal from about the six yard line of the Giants. Mike Barber did one of those things on that play that Tom Landry was talking about Doug Cosby doing so well, uncovering. He ran a hook in the middle, he was covered, then he just moved out to the left and he quickly became uncovered. That's what happens when you get covered. Become uncovered. 14 <laughs> nothing. Raiders over Cincinnati. Marcus Allen has scored both touchdowns. Six Buffalo nothing. Two field goals by Uber Von Sherman. From the nine, they say. Lewis Dickerson to the six. Near the five. D. Hardison took him down to the artificial turf. This is a very tough position to be. You're second down. I'm talking about the Rams on the seven yard line. You really have two plays to get it in. Both of these downs now become passing downs. times Eric Dickerson is carried he's picked up 50 yards you consider this now to be long yardage right I think this will be long yardage yeah. they get to Dickerson he whirls down to about the maybe two yard line before he's knocked out of bounds he can't accelerate Beasley Reese put him out of bounds maybe not if you have a guy named Eric Dickerson it may not be long yardage let's watch it coming right at us here We'll see Dickerson start to the inside to hold that defense, hold the linebackers, got outside of Van Pelt, get up, put that shoulder down, and get that one more yard. Now third and two, that's also long yardage. Dickerson 13 carries now, 54 yards, third and goal at the two-yard line. Durant dig in, and so do the Rams. They'll run a play pass here. Eric Amo. Getting to Dickerson, they lost the football. Giants get it back. Paragamo and Dickerson collided. Beasley Reese made the recovery. The big play by the Giants that are very alert. Again with the guy like Dickerson. They're trying to hammer the ball in him. Now watch Paragamo start to hand up. Either Dickerson came too tight to him, or Ferragamo went too too tight to Dickerson because they run into each other. Let's watch it from the end zone. He starts, he fakes outside, see, and he hit him right on the hip. He never recovered from the fake. Beasley Reese recovered the football. Giants six, Rams three, 527 left first half. What happened? 
sequence here, you see Ferragamo is faking to number 24, A.J. Jones, and that takes him too wide. See, it takes him out there to fake. Now watch, right here, he bumps right into Dickerson, who never gets the ball. Beasley Reese does. Giants ball. They take it over at their own one-yard line. The half today, don't forget Brent Nerv and scores and highlights in the story of Art Fleister for Charles Canty. U.S. Open tennis highlights. Brunner gives on first down to Carpenter, who got back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Here's how the Saints tied up the Cardinals. George Rogers on a brilliant run, got it down to the nine. Then it was Wayne Wilson, who earlier had dropped the touchdown pass, and now it's deadlocked at seven. Let's go back to Pat and John. A lot of people picking New Orleans to win that division. Of course, the Rams very much disprove of that pick. Second down. Bruner is going to throw out of the end zone. Does. Incomplete. Intended for Carpenter. The Rams had it well covered, however. Mel Owens was right there. Didn't fool anybody. You know, that's a very dangerous thing, throwing out of your own end zone. Because, of course, if there's anything, any tap or bat or interception, it's an automatic touchdown. Plus, if you get a penalty in the end zone, that's a safety. That's two points for the other team. So if the offensive line in pass protection, if they hold, then that would be two points for the Rams. Should make it 6-5. Third down and 10. Let's see what Bruner does now. Bill Parcells, who calls the play. Carpenter. He gets Dave Jennings a little bit of room and gets a giant first down. Great run. Great run by Rob Carpenter. See, Rob Carpenter was saying this week that the Giants need a leader on offense. I think they found one today. Yeah, right there. I think he's the leader. He's the inspirational leader. He's the guy that gives you that effort. They talk about give 90, give 100%, give 110%. Watch this move. Little move, boom, and then finish it off. Carry some guys with you. Get the first down. Now, that's running like a fullback. He's a little tired at the moment. 11 carries for 86 yards for Rob Carpenter. Those second efforts like that one carry you out considerably. Wolfhook this time. A couple. When you get backed up, as you say, the first thing you want to do is get the ball out of there and give your runner some room. Now, the second thing you'd like to do is now get out beyond the 20, then work from the 20 to midfield, and then open everything up. John Tuggle has replaced Carpenter. He's an interesting story. It's an interesting story in that he was the last player drafted in the NFL draft. They say he weighs 205, but he plays like 230. Runner Missler at the plate. Youngblood, the pressure, the coverage by Kurt Collins. It's tough to throw in this situation. Watch, it's a play fake. He fakes to Wolfolk there. Now watch Jack Youngblood. Just as Bruner starts to throw, boom, right on his chest. I'll tell you, that's tough to throw when you got a white jersey with 85 hanging on you. 85 is playing a, an inspired game. This is the most active I've seen Jack Youngblood in the last three or four years. I agree with you. But as someone said, anybody who could play a Super Bowl game with a rope with a broken leg has got to be made of something. Third and seventh of the 17. Runner back. Penalty marker down. Bruner stays in the pocket. Now comes out. Tried to get it out to Danny Pittman, but there has to be holding based on where that flag was. Placed holding on the curve. and holding on the Giants. I'm sure the Rams will turn it down because that'll make it fourth down. Jack Youngblood just wants to hear about it anyway, but I'm sure he'll say no, make them punt. Keep holding number 67 will be refused and it will be fourth down. So Jennings, who previously had to go for the corners and for position, now has a chance to let it out. Henry Ellard back deep for the ring. This will be interesting. 
interesting to watch the hang time because Dave Janis can let this one out. He lines this one, but he keeps it in the air a long time. All the way back to the 22, he chases Henry. Henry gets back to about the 37. Heller brought down by Byron Hunt. Good punt by Jenny. So now we have two minutes and 54 seconds left to play at Giants Stadium in the first half. Giants six, the Rams three. Six three Giants after a 61 yard punt and a 15 yard return. The Rams take over at their own 37. He was in watching films with us yesterday. Last week, he didn't play in the first half, so he made us watch the second half. Watch him. He's a nose tackle right over the center. Look, take on that guy. Keep that right foot planted. Hold him. Throw him off. Boom. Dive through your body. Good play, Big Jim. Well, Jim's not big. He's a little short. Very good play. Most important thing, I think, you'd agree, John, is you don't give ground. He didn't. Eric Unwind, I think, about this play. Still on his feet, down to the giant 45, and, up, and more for the Los Angeles first down, 17 yards. George Martin made the stop. I tell you, Ferragamo is having a lot of success against this giant defense, hitting that tight end in the middle. Seems to be a big hole in there. And they have picked it up and worked on it. Two minutes left to play in the first half with the Giants leading 6-3. Time, Brent and Irv will have scores and highlights. Also, Charles E. Canty will bring you up to date on the story of Art Schleister. That one may not be finished yet. And we'll preview this year's U.S. Open Tennis Championships. That's all coming up at the half. First down, Rams at the Giants 45. They trail by three. At this extra point, keep it in mind. Going deep. Yes, Preston Denard. Preston Denard at the 10. Harry Jackson back there with him. It'll be first and goal from the 10. Another difficult situation. If you can say first and goal is a difficult situation. Let's watch it again, John. Let's watch it. Now, Terry Jackson is a corner, and he's given too much of a cushion here on Denard. Now, watch this. We'll see Denard running a corner pattern. You start in, and then you go back to the outside, and he has about five steps on Terry Jackson. In fact, he had to wait for the ball a little there. Had he not had to wait, that could have been a touchdown. They cannot make a first down without scoring. So, as I said, if you can call this first and goal, unfortunately, here we are. Dickerson, behind the block of David Hill, got only a couple. I'll tell you, Lawrence Taylor sure came down in there, knifing down in there. What happens is they brought the motion, and he led in the middle, and I think that just brought Lawrence Taylor right down that line. That's a play we've seen used over and over. I think Pittsburgh started it, and then Dallas picked it up, and now everybody uses it, where the tight end comes down and blocks on the outside on the man over the middle. So they stop the clock, the Rams do, with a timeout. They have two left, second and eight from the eight. The preceding message was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. We're at Sold Out Giants Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Just across the Hudson from New York City. Pat Summerall with John Madden. You see the timeout remaining. The Giants have all of theirs. The Rams just used one. So they have two left. A minute ten left to play. Plenty of time with that many timeouts. It's second and goal from the eight.
what they would do earlier is a play pass. We watch a play again here. We'll see that they've been running that motion, running Dickerson inside. And what they do here is they just fake it. Watch. We'll see the motion man come into the pitcher, fake to Dickerson, and then the tight end, Barber, he blocks and then runs underneath all the way across the field, starts from the right, and ends up catching the ball over on the left side. That last effort, just getting the ball across the goal line. Chuck Nelson with Nolan Cromwell holding. Nelson is good. And the Rams got in front now, 10 to 6. Let's watch that one again, Pat. We'll see the motion comes here. They fake the ball to Dickerson here. Now Barber is right here. He'll block like it's a run. Then he sneaks right underneath here and catches the ball right in this open. Now watch this. See the motion will start. Hill goes in motion. And now they fake the ball in here to Dickerson. Now that holds the linebacker. See Barber block there? Now he lets the guy go. Now watch as he comes underneath there. There's no one there except an official. That's a good play down there in the goal line. That's tough to defend. 63 yards. There's Mike Barber. Five plays it took him. Barber's caught four passes for 38 yards, one touchdown. Garagamo is eight out of 11 for 103. One TD, one INT. That's the story of the drive. We saw Chuck Nelson there. Of course, he got his first field goal. He has to feel good about that, but on Monday, he may not feel too good because there's word that Joe Donello, the ex-giant kicker, is going to be in Los Angeles for a tryout in the Rams. I don't know if Nelson knows that or not. High kick. Canfield at the eight. Bobbles momentarily. Got some room. Billy Canfield. Knocked out of bounds. Penalty marker down. Knocked out of bounds at the 40 by Kurt Collin. Leroy Irving.
shouldn't be worrying about those backhands and stuff. You ought to be worrying about that three-man line you're playing, man. Second and five from the 15. Jack Youngblood today has given Gordon King all that he can handle. Bruner could have been a little shaken up on that play back because, again, he got hit just as he threw the ball. And he got hit low. It was one of those kind of bend your legs up underneath. And he's got a lot low because he's 6'5", a big target back there. A lot low. <laughs> And there's no underneath help or help in this area here. Now watch it. I made a mess on that one. But watch how far the corner Mike Dennis is. Now, as Farmer comes off, he goes deeper. Now look at that big gap there. Now just come to the outside and look at the area, the, the room in there. See, they could throw that thing in front of those corners all day. That was two plays ago, but it was the same thing that they hit. Should have been an artist, you know that? <laughs> Toulouse Madden, how would that sound? Yeah, that's embarrassing. You know, my third grade art teacher, she sees that. She said he knew that guy couldn't learn that stuff. First down, the Rams now are down to one timeout. Twelve seconds left on the clock. Score is Rams ten, Giants six. Joe, I thought I should have paid more attention to art, less attention to recess and lunch. Paid attention to Art when he was playing for you. Art I, Shell. But I still pay a lot of attention to lunch. <laughs> Eric Dickerson is the deep back. Here comes an all out blitz. Denard going deep. Interception. 
intercepted by Terry Jackson. No penalty marker. There's the penalty marker. Well, that may be just Denard's towel that he had in his pocket. Preston is hurt. Let's see what the call is. Well, the official did throw that flag back. Just to have a miscue. 
miscue and then miscue it right back to the team that miscued it to them. Nine yards on uh, that hookup between Goodwin and Paracamo. They'll go for the first down with Eric Dickerson, who skips out of one man's hands, can't do the other. Mike Dennis came up with a piece of Dickerson's uniform. Brad Van Pelt finally made the tackle, along with help from Brian Kelly. Brad Van Pelt's the guy that makes the play. If you're going to stop a guy like Eric Dickerson, you have to stop him in the backfield before he gets started. Now watch right here, right there. You see Van Pelt got penetration, and he stopped Dickerson from going forward and made him redirect and go laterally again. Almost every year in all pro. Third and four. Eric Hauer will go through the air. Kicks away from one tackler. Throws a low liner. Too low. George Farmer, the intended receiver. John Misko. Heads onto the field now. Eric Amo comes off. Beasley Reese back deep for the Giants. Misko keeps the ball in the air a long time. Or did the first time, the only punt. They had 45 yards. See if we can get the hang time on this time. put too much pressure on this coach. Forget about the hang time. They're going to be called for roughing the kicker. This coach might be shaken just a little bit. Flowers upset the Giants. But no question about the fact that they did run into him. He is hurt. Of course, that's an automatic first down. Now, the Giants were coming on a block here. They were bringing the whole front. It wasn't a return. So they were rushing. Someone goes flying through the air. I guess that's Flowers. It, right? it was Flowers. And he hit, and he hit uh, Misko after he punted the ball. Once that ball leaves the punter's foot, you can't touch it. They have two penalties. One is a five-yard penalty. Personal foul. Number 37 on the defense running into the kicker. First down. Let's watch it from this angle. And we'll see if they rough the kicker intentionally. And that's a 15-yard penalty. This one where they run into him unintentionally. Five yards, first down. Chuck Nelson would be the Ram punter. He is also the place kicker. Misko is walking around trying to shake it off. Dickerson cuts back and wow. Dickerson to midfield, but a penalty flag has been thrown back at about the 30 yard line. They'll bring it back. Be one of those holding penalties against the Rams. You see, Dickerson, though, John Robinson was telling us the best thing about Dickerson is he sees so well, his vision. And that's what he did that time. Square to the line of scrimmage, saw that hole in the big opening, and just popped right through it. Offensive holding, number 56. That was the center. Doug Smith held on that play. But watch Dickerson right here. See, he's starting out to the left. But look at the vision. He sees a hole right there and cuts right in off Doug Smith's block, which turned out to be a hole. But he really does have vision. You know, the great backs are all able, as they make that turn and they get square, to see the whole field. First and 20. Back at the 21 now. David Hill comes in motion. Paragon all steps up, throws down on the middle field. Henry Eller comes up with a reception, and Paragon and Eller hook up, gets it all back. Mike Dennis made the stop. 34-yard pickup. I think that's one of those things that the Rams didn't mean, but it's okay. Barber was in front of Eller. He thought he had the ball. Pretty good pass protection. We see Paragamo there. He's throwing to Ellard. See, Barber was there, thought he was supposed to catch the ball. He was doing a hook in the middle. Ellard ran an in, in behind him. They got more yardage, but both of them were open. And Ellard's faster, though. You always throw the guy who's a little deeper and a lot faster. Ellard is out. Try to 
cut back inside, tripped up after a couple. Spun his wheels a little bit. You know, Eric Dickerson, when he came out to practice yesterday, he stepped on this field and he said, I love this field. What a great field it is to run. And John Robinson said, well, that's one of those good news, bad news. He said, I'm glad you're happy, but doggone it, we play on grass fields a lot this year. What are you going to feel like in November and December when we get you out of the locker room? Second and seven. Ball to the giant, 42, 12-21 left to play in the third quarter. Hill started in motion. Here come over with a lot of time. Has Barber. He'll have a touchdown. No penalty flag this time. Brad Van Pelt trying to cover Mike Barber. I think that was another example of an uncover in there. He looked like Barber was covered in the middle. It was against a double zone, so the tight end has to be covered by a linebacker. Let's see if we can watch it here from the end zone. We'll see they start off with a little play fake to Dickerson, try and hold those linebackers. Barber's in here. It looks like he was running the hook, and then he had Van Pelt on him. He just turned and ran. There's no safety in there because they have rotated to the outside in that double coverage. Chuck Nelson with Nolan Cromwell holding will try to add the extra point. Ram 16, Giants 6. Nelson kicks it into the crowd. Would not have been any good if nobody had touched it. Byron Hunt batted it down, but it never got airborne. Well, that evens out those uh, missed conversions then, doesn't it? One for each side. 16 to 6. East Rutherford, New Jersey. Pat Summerall and John Matt. There's the scoring drive. 42-yard pass from Ferragamo to Barber. Extra point missed. Nelson, who missed the extra point, will just kick off now. Billy Canfield back deep to the Giants. Good kick. To the 24. Let's see if we can watch that touchdown again. Now, here's the tight end right here. Here's Van Pelt, who is on a man-to-man. -man. Now, he holds him up here. The safeties come out. Now, the problem with that is, is once this tight end gets by the linebacker, then he has the whole field in the middle. Now, watch the action right there. We'll see the motion come. Now, right there, you see Van Pelt. He's on him. He's on him. He's holding him. And now, and now Barber runs away. But because it's a double coverage, there's no safety in the middle. On first down, Bruner throws his tight end. Mullody, the intended receiver. Bruner threw it a little too hard. Carl Eckern, the defender. The word on Preston Denard is that he has a sprained ankle and will not return. So, Ellard and Farmer. Bill Sims had been a regular, lost the job to Bruner, keeping the ball warm. Second and ten from the 25. And on Carpenter. Nope. Mel Owens. See what's happening to Miami and Buffalo. A lot of field goals on one side. Three by Uwe von Schumann. The Dolphins lead Buffalo 9 0. Minnesota 17, Cleveland 14. Sipe just hit uh, Mark Mike Pruitt to bring Cleveland closer. It's third and eight here. Carpenter, the one back. Three receiver, including Muddy to the left. Speed? Yes, sir. Danny Pittman. Pretty good pass protection. You see King right there. He claps Jack Youngblood. Throws the ball one-on-one -on, -one on Kirk Collins right up over the inside shoulder. Perfect throw. Good pass protection. Not a bad catch. 
first down. As a result, Ram 33, 16-6, Los Angeles lead. Missler in motion. Pitches back to Bush Wolfram. Wolfram got to the 30. Ram pursuit is more than adequate, led by George Andrews. Pretty good form tackle. He just hooked on right around there and kept it. Now watch the pursuit here. It's tough to cut back when you have good pursuit. Now what? See, he has a force up there. Now right there as he cuts back, there's Andrew. That's what you try and get. The onside to come up, make him cut back, then the offside of the defense coming across and taking care of the cutback. Myron Lapka is now the nose tackle in that Ram setup. That 3-4 that they're using for the first time. Mullody never turned around in time. He was the intended receiver, but Lapka put the heat on Bruner. One of those things about Bruner, you know, uh, Bill Parcells was talking about quarterback inefficiency, and he said that's number of sacks or number of interceptions you have. And he said that Bruner is so good at that. Last year he threw 165 passes without an interception or a sack, and that's one of the reasons. These guys are covered. He just threw that one away. Tell you what, the Rams have gotten a pretty good pass rush all day long from that three-man front. Now they put in Jeter and have four down line. Look how wide Youngblood gets on that. Quick count. Carpenter. Touch back. And he leans forward for about four. Not a very popular call with the fans. Mel Owens went the defense for the Rams. And now we'll see Ali Haji Sheik. Rookie from Michigan. Hey, you know, he was born in Michigan. I asked him yesterday if he's, at, if he's ever been out of the country. He said, yeah, I was in Canada once. Well, Bob Stinner, our producer, asked him before the game, what does that mean? Ali Haji Sheik, and he said it doesn't mean anything. It's my name. <laughs> Name's supposed to mean something. 45 yards out for Ali Haji Sheik, and he is wide right. He may lose some of his harem if he keeps missing. 16 to 6. The Rams lead the Giants with 9.01 left third quarter. Don't forget coming up next, third round action from the U.S. Open Tennis Championships just across the city. Flushing Meadow. The number one seed, John McEnroe, against Vince Van Patten. McEnroe plays tennis like a linebacker. He has that look in his eye of a linebacker. <laughs> For an ex-coach. <laughs> Ask some of the officials about that. So it's that ex-coach. <laughs> First down, Rams. Their own 28. Eric almost gets to Dickerson on first down. Outside the 30 and a half yard line, maybe. Lawrence Taylor. Some of the other scores. The Raiders 17, Cincinnati 3. New Orleans 14, St. Louis 10. Ken Stabler was injured, by the way. Don't know if he's still playing or if he came back or not. It'll be second and seven. They'll have to be disappointed in Cincinnati. They, they haven't won a game all year. Really? Going four in the preseason? Yeah. Everybody thought they were loaded, including us. Side. Ellis. Still on his feet is Ellis. And you talked about exhibiting a little quickness. I'll tell you, he did, and he didn't have his block. You know, that was one of those screen passes. And his left guard, Ken Hill, was supposed to be out there, but he didn't get out in time, so he was all on his on his own. It was like an island out here. Watch a fake pass. Now the guard is pulling out. You see Hill, but he doesn't get there until it's too late. But Ellard still makes a move here. Boom, a move here. And here comes Lawrence Taylor flying across the field. Ellard only weighs 170. He's a rookie from Fresno State. That was a pretty good effort right there. They think he's going to be a good one. First down range. Eric Amo going to work. Going to work deep. Incomplete. Intended for Farmer of the Giants. Mike Dennis led the coverage, and the coverage was good. Well, that was one of those double zone things where he was playing under, underneath, and the safety came across. 
think that was Purrier who really made a nice job on that. He covered a lot of ground while that ball was in the air. Atlanta 13, Chicago 10, third quarter. Green Bay 28 now, Houston 7, 17. Second and ten, the ball at the 42. 8-11 left to play third quarter. Hill in the game, two tight ends. And off Dickerson. Dickerson near a first down, hanging on to the football. Beasley Reese. I think, I think, Lawrence thinks somebody held him. I think he did, and I think he's probably right because there's a flag out there. Let's see what happened to Taylor on that flag. But he's going to be blitzing. <laughs> He comes from the outside. That's David but Hill. You just get him diving right there at the end. Someone was holding his foot. It was David Hill holding Offensive his foot. Offensive holding, number 56. Well, second down. It is 56 is Smith, of course, the offensive center. That's the second or third time that they've had Doug Smith. Watch that. You know, centers are getting, watch that left hand. Goes right up there and grabs, goes up and grabs again. And by the time Dickerson gets through there, it's off. We're seeing more and more of those centers holding now with the three man line and the nose tackle on their head. Second and 20, and think about the yardage that Dickerson's had it wiped out by penalty. Taylor on a blitz. And they call a penalty against Taylor. He can't believe it. Going to be roughing the passer, I'm sure. And Sparagamo's helping up Lawrence Taylor after he roughed him. That was another one of those screen passes where the back that he wanted to throw to didn't get out there. Let's watch it. Now there's a couple rules here. Once the quarterback throws the ball, he can't be touched. First once he foul. becomes runner. That's a big thing in the NFL now. Watch his reaction.
Jefferson. Taking his shoe off. Too early to call. 16 to 6. Rams lead the Giants. Eric Dickerson, the numbers on him, 20 for 61 yards. They've been checking his toe. You know, that's a new injury since artificial turf. They call that an artificial toe turf, turf toe. A lot of T's in there. But what, what happens is the foot gets caught and the toe jams up inside the shoe. The traction is so good with the shoes and the turf combination. That's what happens. Joe Morris is the ball carrier, I believe, this time. And Morris struggles and fights and the Rams. guys who, who gets dirty on artificial turf. I don't know how, unless he brings the dirt from home with him in his pickup truck, and he's that, he's that type of guy. You know the pickup truck? Yeah. The gun on the back. Yeah, the rack back there. Yeah, the rack, the chewing tobacco. Yeah. Spotlight outside the driver's window. Good old boy says, yip a lot. Second 11. Ferragamo on a semi rollout. Complete. Missler was the receiver. He caught the ball, but he was out of bounds. Scott Bruner took a pretty good hit. We're still working on that artificial turf toe. Eric Dickerson. It looks like they're going to tape it and give it a little support, but those things tend to linger. Remember they last do. year, I think Billy Sims had one of those and even missed a few games with it. Something you never think you need much is that big toe, you know, and how you get it stubbed or hurt and kind of lingers, hangs around a little. I remember needing it as a kicker. Well, yeah, kicker. Third down, 11. Youngblood pushes Gordon King back into the backfield, but Bruner gets it out to Carpenter, and he's be, he'll be just a little bit shy of the first down. George Andrews stopped Carpenter. I think there's another reason that Scott Bruner doesn't take a lot of sacks is because he's big enough, tall enough to see, and strong enough to hang in there with defensive ends darn near on both shoulders that time and still get the ball off. One of the things I think they feel that gives Bruner an advantage is the fact that his father was a coach and is a coach. That's what Bill Parcells says, and he understands the business of football, not just the play-in and the game, but the whole business of professional football. Jennings didn't get it. Henry Eller has the room. Eller hit down hard by Mike Whittington. 33-yard punt. Four-yard return. It hasn't been one of Jennings' better days. So we have four minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the third period at Giants Stadium with the Rams still enjoying a 10-point advantage. down some scores while we have a second. Pittsburgh 10, Denver 7. Franco Harris got the Steeler touchdown. He's moving up on the all-time list. New Orleans 21, St. Louis 10. Of course, Dallas will be at St. Louis next week, and that'll be our big game. Detroit 8, Tampa Bay nothing after the Bucks scored all those points in the preseason. New England leading Baltimore 16-13. And Minnesota 24, Cleveland 14. Here at Giants Stadium, it's the Rams 16, the Giants 6. Alexander is still the runner. And he gets the call, and maybe a couple, possibly three. One more score. Chicago Bears have recaptured the lead, and they lead the Falcons 17-13. That's in the third quarter. Alexander, number 31, replaced Eric Dickerson. He's from West Virginia, a second-year man. Not as big as Dickerson. Six feet, 185. Second and eight. Barber. Ram first down. Giant territory. Knocked out of bounds by Mike Dennis. Big day for Mike Barber. It's been a big day for the Ram tight ends. A uh, uh, Barber must have about four catches now. And... Uh, uh, Hill has two, excuse me, he has six receptions for 89 yards, and Hill has two, so that's eight of the receptions have been to the tight ends today for the Rams. 
And both teams have been doing something that we felt, particularly John Madden felt, would be somewhat of a new trend, and that is throwing a lot on first down. D. Hardison hit him first. Well, you notice how much a, a great running back can help an offensive line. It seems when Dickerson was in there that the line was firing off the line a little more. They were staying with their blocks, getting blocked. Dickerson comes to the sideline. Alexander's in there. And they don't seem to be getting those holes in there anymore that Dickerson had. Or maybe great backs create their own holes. I don't know. I think they make it easier for the offensive linemen. I think they kind of excite the offensive yeah. linemen, too. When you know there's a guy like Dickerson or an O.J. or a Jim Brown or someone back there, maybe you tend to work a little harder. Alexander straight ahead. About three shy of a first down. Dickerson walking around now. They put some tape on it part of his foot right behind the big toe and still limping a little bit well when they put their helmet on that's a pretty good sign you know that means that they're about ready to go in again when you see them standing on the sideline with a baseball cap they aren't going anywhere to play green bay 31 houston 17 uh, let's see the rams have a little misunderstanding of the huddle so it's Los Angeles. That'll mean they have two left. It's third and three as Ferragamo comes to the side. We have 2.46 left. Third quarter with the Rams leading the Giants by 10 points. Eric Dickerson. Now it would appear that they're taking the tape off that they put on, retaping the whole thing. Yeah, they are. They're taking the whole ankle tape job off, and maybe they're going to start and get start underneath his foot to give it some support there. He tried to run, and then went back to the table. Third. Ball of the Giants, 38. Giants on a blitz, and it worked. George Martin put the heavy pressure on Ferragamo. Misco comes in. No field goal try from the end zone. He was trying to wait there for George Farmer. He had George Farmer open off to his right. We see right here, see George Martin's coming in, and he couldn't wait any longer for Martin, so he just had to throw the ball. I mean, for George Farmer. <laughs> George could, Martin was the well, one. Martin was there. He couldn't wait for Martin to get to him, so he threw the ball to Farmer before he was ready. Let's go from midfield. Good early and had that carpenter running and hitting a few things and 
you know, sometimes that happens in that first league game. You play the preseason, and you play your guys a quarter here and a quarter there, and you have different uh, quarterbacks playing and starting. And then the season opens, you have to put them all together one time for the entire game. Melody in motion, they give the carpenter again. He cuts back inside and gets the first down. Great tackle. Gets to the 38. Carl Ecker and Johnny Johnson finally cut him down. Carpenter goes over 100 yards. 15 carries, 105. That was some of the things we were talking about. The cutback, the vision. Carpenter comes up to the line, sees vision, sees that cutback there. And then the Ram defense really didn't pursue it. Now watch Carpenter here. He starts here. Watch the vision. All the way back there, he sees that. He didn't have anyone coming, collapsing that backside on him. Bruno Groh on first down. Looking right, now left. Ernest Gray can't quite hang on. A penalty marker is down. And that looks like that'll go against the frustrated Giants. I'm sure it is. It's a holding penalty. one of those things, you know, just, you, you finally get a little running, you finally get a first down, and boom, there's that flag on first down, that holding penalty, those things will kill you. Rams using Gary Jeter now full-time in, in the defensive line. Offensive holding, number 67. That's it, in the right part of the picture, number 67 there, that's the left guard, Billy Yard. Look, he has that right hand right outside, that whole hand and arm outside the fast rusher, Gary Jeter. First and 20, Bruner, draw play Carpenter. Jack Youngblood did a good job of picking up draw. There's Gary Jeter. He fills out that old 77 pretty well, doesn't he? He does with the Giants, he was number 70. Their number two draft choice, Leonard Marshall, has that number now. Second down and about 15, 16 meters. Bruner looking down the middle. Ernest Gray got it. It'll be enough for a first down. Kirk Collins on the cover. Let's watch Ernest Gray here. Now that's a zone. You see the linebacker flies out to zone. The corner's deep. Gray comes in, finds a hole in front of the defensive back and between the two linebackers. Works back to the quarterback. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Rams 16, the Giants 6. And we now pause for a word from your local station. Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. Valvoline. Valvoline is everything you need in a motor oil. And by Delta Faucet. When they're on, they're on. When they're off, they're off. Denard on the sideline on crutches, sprained his ankle. No more information as to how serious it might be. When you come back on crutches, Ernest Gray juggles, cuts back inside, back to the outside, gets out of bounds, that'll stop the clock. And all that juking and jugging got about enough yardage for a first down. Leroy Irvin on the stop. That was pretty smart, though. You see what he did? Watch this. He catches his little short pass. He starts in there. He sees all those white jerseys and says, well, I don't want to go in there. Let me go back where there's no guys. He got out of bounds. That's smart. You know, that's that old psychology test where if the rat goes in and if he turns left, he gets the cheese. If he turns right, they hit him over the head with something. Then they go in and they keep going to the cheese. So they start to see all those jerseys. They run to the sideline. Ernest Gray saw some cheese out of bounds. <laughs> Missler, motion man, started, stopped. Carpenter booms down for a first down. George Andrews made the tackle. Baltimore 20, New England 16. Minnesota 27, Cleveland 14. First down, Giants. I'll tell you, if the Giants are going to make a game out of it, they need a score right here. Now, they 
a touchdown and a field goal, I don't think it makes any difference which one they get. But they need one on this drive. They also need to make that extra point. This one, here is Bruner. And here comes Youngblood. Gordon King has had a long day with Jack Youngblood. The fourth sack of Bruner. That's one of those things where Jack Youngblood does it not only with strength, but with speed. You just see right out of the right there, he's going to run right around Gordon King. You see it right there, he gets by him and right on Scott Bruner, who didn't have a chance to get rid of the ball. You see those pants are he got blood on them. Look a lot. Holy moly. Hey, that's great. No dirt. A lot of blood hanging down there. Second and 19 from the 47. Ritter again drops. Again, he's under pressure. Penalty marker down. John Missler was the intended receiver. Reggie Doss was the man who applied the pressure. Incomplete. You know, that seemed to be happening to the giant offense all day. It's not that they can't run because Carpenter has shown that. It's not that they can't pass because they have had their completions. But it's just that they can't do it Offense together. Offensive holding, number 67, will be refused. Third down. It's really lack of consistency. That's exactly the correct. Pat Hoxton over on the sideline giving the signals to Scott Brunner about what he wants called. Third and 19. It's a tough one to decide what you want to call third and 19. I used to drink a lot of water on that down. And look backwards. <laughs> Rams put the pressure on. He gets it out to Carpenter. Carpenter gets away from a couple of tacklers. I don't know if he got close enough for Ali Hachi Sheik or not. Bill Owens. Bill is stop. Excuse me, Pat. It would be about a 53-yard field goal from here. Bartkowski pulls out here, and he's looking for Alfred Jenkins, an old favorite target. It's good. 21-yard touchdown, and now the Falcons lead the Bears 2017. Back to Pat and John. All right, Brent, thank you. It's 16-6. Rams over the Giants with 11-30 left to play in the game. Second and seven. Alexander got three. 
In motion, Ferragamo under pressure. Keller. Got it. What a catch by him. Boy, they think he's going to be a good one. They're right. He's starting out that way today. He was man-to-man -man on Terry Jackson, running step for step, and then right at the end, he just lunged out. Watch the end of that. Here's Terry Jackson, 24. He should have gotten a bump there. You see, he let Ellard get by him. Ellard's just running, watching the ball. Watch right at the end how he extends his body and makes that hook. That's a great catch. Pretty good throw, too. Sometimes I think the word great is overused, but not in that case. Ellard's caught three for 91 yards. He was a Rams second round draft choice this year, and he was late coming to camp because he hadn't agreed to a contract, and John Robinson says he'll develop as the season goes. Go with their extra tight end setup. That's Dickerson back in the game. I think he got that new tape job on, and it looked like what they were trying to do is give him some support underneath that toe. But that's one of those things that could linger with him. You know, it feels all right now. To a back who cuts so well and sees so well as he does, that could really hurt him. See Hardison checking out, limping a little bit. Second down and nine, they call it. Eight, we call it. Puts his head down, bounces close to first down yardage before Bill Courier made the stop. He has a first down. You know, I said when the Giants had the ball, I felt if they were going to be in this game, that they had a score on that last possession. And when they didn't, and they didn't hold them down there, they really let the Rams off the hook. And the Rams are doing it with some good offense, good mixture, running inside, outside, good passing deep to the outside, hit the tight end inside. That's one thing they are doing is moving the ball around well. Ferragamo is now 16 out of 25 for 275 yards. So he's off to a good start. Hill goes high in motion. Pitches back to Dickerson. Dickerson was hit by Lawrence Taylor first, and then Joe McLaughlin tripped him up. Dickerson doesn't look quite comfortable now. Not as he did in the beginning. No, he's, he's not making those quick moves anymore, but again, Lawrence Taylor had something to do with that by getting penetration. He penetrated about five yards, and he got Dickerson again before he really could get on track. It'll be second down and 13 as Dickerson lost three. Ferragamo probably have to go back to the year. Mike Barber, not enough for a first down inside the 25 to about the 28. Brad Van Pelt made the stop, and Chuck Nelson strides on. Somebody was saying earlier who had watched him kick, saying, I think he takes too many short steps. Well, yesterday in practice, I know he was taking a lot of little, quick, nervous type steps. They are the same. Finally, John Robinson had to tell him to get off the field. He was trying him from about 70 yards. <laughs> I said, he's going to leave his leg here on Saturday. This will be from 40 yards. He's one for one already. Hit the upright. No good. You hear one of the giant players was yelling, no good, no good, before it hit that upright. He knew right when his left his foot. So the lead stays 16 to 6. You saw John Robinson. 12 0 
nothing, Miami over Buffalo. Raiders 20, Cincinnati 3. Atlanta 20, Chicago 17. Green Bay 31, Houston 24. All those games in the fourth quarter, as is this one. First and 10, Giants from their own 23. They're going to have to throw just about every play. Twitter has time for a change. And Missler comes down with it. Carl Eckern almost picked it off, and then Missler came down with it. I've been impressed, John, with the work of the front three and the linebackers for the rain. Right, they have really done a good job, and they got a lot more pass rush from that three-man line than they thought they were going to. And I'll tell you one thing about this this year's Ram team. They're much more active than they were last year. They were embarrassed about last year. There's the penalty marker down. The young blood went by, had a chance for a sack. Almost had Scott Bruner. Bruner shook him off. Which Wolf caught the pass. Penalty against the Giants. Youngblood almost had Bruner. Here's Jack. Playing like he's a two-year man. And maybe that's why they're doing so much holding. You know, that's the sixth time that the Giants can call for holding Offensive today. Offensive holding, number 68. That's the right guard, J.T. Turner, on that one. They've been moving it up and down the line of scrimmage. They've had King, they have Turner, they've... crazy at that. You know, I used to tell my guys, how can you line up? Look, here's 67. Right over the ball. You got to watch the ball. Watch the ball. What are you moving for? The ball didn't move. You know, if it happens to an end, you can say, ah, okay, you couldn't see it or you thought you saw something. When you line up on that thing, you move when the ball moves. He hooked up like you heard his feeling. Look, he's getting red. See, I'm, the ball spot in the back is getting red, but he's doing it. He's saying the same thing. <laughs> Jump offside and line up on the ball. Second and eight for the 25. Bruner. Going deep for nobody. Mike Miller might have broken off a pattern. He's the young man uh, with all that speed that they picked up from Green Bay. He's not that fast, however. I think that's what happened. I think that, you know, he probably didn't know his patterns. He was supposed to go deep. Let's watch some of that pass protection. There's Gordon King on Youngblood. See, he got his arms out there. That's good. Keep him away. But one thing about Jack Youngblood, he just keeps working. See Scott Bruner's reaction there? He's saying, hey, he was supposed to go deep, not him. Third down. Bruner. Picked off by the Rams. Leroy Irvin. Line to the 26, where he's knocked out of bounds by Missler, but the Rams will have it in good shape. Ernest Gray, the intended receiver, 20-yard return after the interception. I think this is one that Bruner throws out of frustration. I think that last play frustrated him. Here, he just throws this one up for grab. You know, he throws it. I mean, he sees Gray, but when there's a guy behind him, a guy to the side, and a guy in front of him, that's a tough receiver to choose to throw to. Interception, the third turnover by the Giants. Garagamo back out of the huddle, and the Rams will go to work in a hurry. Line of scrimmage, the Giant 27, 6 27. Look at the last six possessions. Very unfortunate developments. Garagamo to Eric Dickerson. Van Pelt made the stop. Giants by 10. Giants Stadium. Mike Goodman checked over the sidelines. Excuse me, John. Second and eight. I was just going to say one person that's not here today is the owner of the Rams, Georgia Frontieri. She woke up the other morning and she had a, uh, a retina. I think it was a torn retina and she had retina sur surgery this week. And so it's the first Ram game that she's missed. Dickerson again. 
Lawrence Taylor picks it up. He fumbled. The scramble. Still a scramble. Giants finally came up with it. Face mask. 
Good stuff. 29 is a funny number for him. I told John Robbins, I said, I don't like that number. He said, well, you will after you watch him play. He said, some guys carry good numbers and some guys make good numbers. Well, one of the best 29s ever to play played here. Was a teammate of mine with the Giants was Alex Webster. Big Red. That was Harry Carson on the sideline, the Giants all-pro inside linebacker who has a bad ankle. They didn't know. He didn't practice all week. They thought that yesterday he might still play, but then they decided not to use him today. Probably a wise decision. We'll get him back sooner. Good job, Dickerson. He's definitely not cutting like he did earlier. Mike Dennis made the stop along with Brad Van Pelt. Check out St. Louis and New Orleans. Saints 28, St. Louis 10. New Orleans just scored a 35-yard pass from Dave Wilson, who has replaced Stabler. It's a Ken Puckett. They will play St. Louis, Dallas will next week. Will be in Atlanta, Washington against Philadelphia. And of course, the NFL today will precede that. Both teams have one timeout remaining. I'm sorry, the Rams have two. The ball is at the 31 yard line. Third down and three. And Kelly over talking and Ferragamo over talking. John Robinson, I must say, John, has seemed very relaxed on the sidelines throughout the whole afternoon. You know, he does that. He's a, a very calm thinker. He's not a calm person. You know, there are some people that are calm people and calm thinkers. I think Tom Landry's that way. John is an excitable guy, but a calm thinker. He's one of those, one of the few head coaches who doesn't have a card with some notes on it or a headset or something like that. He's just there and leading. I think that's the way it should be. On the other side, Bill Parcell communicating directly with his assistants up in the press box. I've always said, if by, by the time you get to the game, if you have to write it down to remember it, you shouldn't use it anyway. That's a Dickerson move. And so is that last one where he lowered the shoulder. Beasley Reese knocked him out of bounds, but not until he got a first down. Let's watch how they block Lawrence Taylor out here, 56. We see that's David Hill on him. You see, he gets him hooked. Because what happened, you see, Taylor started to look into the backfield to see where Dickerson was. And when he stood up to look, then David Hill just chopped him from the outside. That was a good job by David Hill. That's the way it should be done. That was good technique. Right. You know, an outside linebacker just has to take on that tight end and be patient. Let the ball come to you. You don't have to look over into the backfield, because that always happens. The guy goes underneath and cuts you. Alexander has replaced Dickerson. And they give it to him. The yellow marker one more time appears. Beasley Reese on the tackle. That's one thing you always have more of early. Conversely, less of later is flags in a football game. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the officials are just tougher earlier in the season to set a pattern. Illegal formation on the offense. Refuse. It will be second down. Eric Dickerson doesn't have 100 yards yet, but had he had those 31 back of penalty, he'd have over 100 yards. That's what he had. 27 for 83. It'll be second and nine. Four and a half minutes left to play. Rams 16. Giants 6. Keeping it on the ground, giving to Dickerson. He might have gotten a yard. So Dickerson recovers. Let's go for an NFL update to Brent Musburger in New York. Pat, you told me yesterday that Earl Campbell was going to line up a touch deeper for Houston. It's paid a huge dividend. 25 carries, 112 yards, three touchdowns. They're tied at 31. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go. Back to you, Pat. 
pretty good contest in the Astrodome. Well, that Earl Campbell running, that's just a little leftover from last week against Dallas. We had that game, he was doing the same thing against that Dallas defense. It looked like Earl Campbell of about four years ago. All timeouts gone now for the Giants. Third down for the Rams, third and eight at the 48. What about his coaching staff, John? A lot of college coaches coming into the pros along with Robinson. Is that going to be a minus or does it make any difference? I don't think it is. You know, we were talking about that last night, and I said that the way the game is going today, offensively with all the motion and types of things, defensively, they're all three-man line teams, and that's what the colleges are used to uh, playing against. And of course, some of those guys are old friends of his. Marv Gu was with them at SC for years. Hudson Howe, uh, those type of guys. Bruce Snyder, he's known those guys for years. And I think that they're ready to coach pro football. Sure looks like it. Third down and eight from the 48. Eric Amo's going to put it up. As a man, oh, he had him. Just misread it a little bit. Working with a new receiver sometimes can be very difficult. Eric Amo had a good day, nevertheless. Well, he threw it in the right place. It was an all-out blitz. Again, there was no safety sitting in the middle, and he threw that ball right up there to the post, and it was just inches off. Talking to Jack Falker before the game, the Ram organization. If anything, he felt this is unusual to say about a quarterback that Ferragamo had too much confidence. I'd rather have that than the opposite. Misco hangs it high. He can reach their catch signal at the 17. He said Ferragamo had so much belief, believed in his arm, so much confidence that sometimes he felt, they felt that he tried to throw it in places that he shouldn't. But as you say, I'd rather have too much confidence than no confidence. Well, you know, Kenny Staber was the same way. He used to believe that if there was a defender on the right and a defender on the left, and he had a little hole in there between those defenders that he could get it in there to his receiver, and he was right most of the time. I like, I think you have to have it. If you're going to be a leader, you have to have it. impressive thing about this Ram outing today is the defense has really been down. You know, for years that was the strength of the Rams. Look at that. They have five sacks today. The Giants don't have any. But the way they're playing, they're playing like a younger college team. I mean, they're scrambling, they're hustling, they're getting a lot of guys to the ball, all those types of things. Well, back at the nine where Bruner starts, intended for Carpenter, got him. Three more 
York scores. This one is 16 to 6 in favor of the Rams. Green Bay. Boy, it's hard to keep them off the board. 75 yards from Dickey to James Lofton. And they go ahead of Houston 38-31. Minnesota 27. Cleveland coming back. 21. New Orleans 28. St. Louis 17. Hart, Jim Hart to Pat Tilly. The 18th year for Jim Hart. Next Sunday. NFL today will begin it all. The Giants will be in Atlanta, Washington against Philadelphia. And Dallas goes to St. Louis. And that's always over the years been right down to the wire. I remember two years ago we did the game in St. Louis, and St. Louis upset the Cowboys. Right. Here's Dickerson. Straight ahead for a yard. And Pelt comes out of that stack lift limping.
what his frame of mind might be. I think as intelligent as he is, and as some of the things we've been saying during the afternoon, he'll approach it certainly in a very mature fashion. Well, I know right now, as he walked off the field after that last interception, he was very frustrated. That was a look of a frustrated person. Of course, he has all week to get it back before they play Atlanta next week. And I don't think you change quarterbacks after one game. I agree with you. The NFL season of 19 of the 64th season, 1983. Executive producer is Terry O'Neill. Senior producer, Charles H. Milton III. This game produced so, so well, as always, by Robert Stenner, Dean, and directed by Sandy Grossman. None better. Speaking of none better, how about the rest of the crew? That's a tough one. You know, and there's no way to get it off your mind. No. No place to go. No theater to attend. No play good enough to make you forget about it. And the coach, Bill Parcells, he'll have those same feelings. He's giving that gum a workout today. Kind of lonely. You ever notice that when you're losing, there's not a lot of people around the head coach? But if you look over at the other sideline, there's all kinds of people around John Robinson. That would mean to me that you were never lonely very much because you didn't lose very much. And there weren't many around. You see the difference there? Look at that L.A. bench. You got coaches, players, guys with hats, officials. Yeah. Nobody sitting down there. The biggest smile was number 77, Gary Jeter. Yeah be a great thrill for him to come back here and then put away a victory like this 16 to 6 and they had some more chances John they could have scored some more points well, John Robinson a very happy individual right now I'm sure his coaching debut in the NFL a rousing success score probably doesn't mean rousing for him to come out of college football and take on the NFL and succeed has to be very gratifying. Pat Summerall and John Madden. And John, your impressions after you watch the two teams on opening day. Well, you know, we were talking about the Rams. And the, I think I think one, one of the things John Robinson was saying is he didn't know about his defense. I think he has to be impressed with that. I think the Giants are going to be a little frustrated. I think indeed you're right because the Rams have won it. 16 to 6. And the defense played well. So be sure to stay with us as we bring you the U.S. Open Tennis Championships featuring John McEnroe against Vince Van Patten. That's next. So for John Madden, I'm Pat Summerall saying so long from East Rutherford, New Jersey, where the final score is the Rams 16, the Giants 6. You've been watching CBS coverage of the National Football League.